Freeze! We've got reports of a possible fungi infestation. My god, it's worse than we thought. Evening. Why don't you join us for dinner? Jesus Christ, it talks! I'm gonna need backup. We've got a code red classification Z77120. I'm gonna need all incendiary ballistics at this location. Ah, very well. Join the Spider Queen as family. We've gotta get out of here. Suck on this, you eight legged freak. Hello and welcome back my friends, I'm that one guy for never, welcome to Cabbage Core. I want to welcome you to my New Game Plus build series. I've been working hard on developing some builds to help you guys dominate, but also enjoy the New Game Plus content. In case you missed it, this is actually my fifth build in this series. Whether you're looking for a build featuring great swords, bows, axes, or something a little more funky, I'm sure I have the perfect build for you, with more still to come. Support my channel? Check them out. But first, only 5% of you watching are actually subscribed. You're busting my balls, guys. Show me some love, smash that sub button, and turn on your notifications. Alright, let's jump in and take a look at my fifth build. The Bonfu Modi Monk is absolutely insane. This is the boss killer you've all been waiting for. Featuring some of the highest potential you can get out of any combat build in New Game Plus, Fists are back, baby. I learned in my Mad Scientist build that you could gain the stacks of buffs from the Trinket modifier, then switch trinkets for new benefits while retaining all the buffs from the original one. Well, we're gonna take that to a whole new level, because it doesn't just work with Mad Scientist, but with many other trinket modifiers as well. I'm so excited to show this build off because I've undeniably broken the game. Tired of the Wasp Queen and her family shoving you around? It's time to unleash some domestic violence. Does the infected broodmother laugh in the face of your pathetic damage? Well move over big mama, there's a new moldy matriarch in town. For the build, it's time to yoke up and get a little funky. But wait, where's our weapon? Well, you are the weapon. Thanks to the new trinket modifier, Fury, we can inherit not only weapon-specific mutations, but also weapon-specific trinket modifiers. Yep, you heard me right. We can use modifiers like Mad Scientist and Samurai. This allows us to throw out punches so fast that our character's animations can't even keep up. More on that soon. In our offhand, we wield the Fire Ant Shield for its awesome effect, Block Corrosion. On any block, this has a 20% chance to debuff the enemy, causing them to take 15% more damage for 10 seconds. A Monarch needs the proper clothes, so for armor, we're rocking Moldy Matriarch, the full set in fact. But wait, how does that work? This set only benefits the Blaster, right? Wrong. This set benefits any and all explosives, including Truffle Tussle. The first perk, Big Boom, gives all explosive attacks a chance to provide a stacking 5% critical damage buff, stacking 20 times until combat ends. Fully stacked, that's an extra 100% crit damage. The set bonus, Cluster Bomb, gives all explosions a 10% chance to proc another explosion for an extra 70 damage. Damage. Now you might be thinking, that's cool and all, but bosses have super high explosive resistance. That's right, but the sleek perk, Dynamitey, causes our explosions to reduce the enemy's explosive resistance by 20%. Screw you, resistances. It doesn't stop there though. We get even more benefits from this armor set thanks to the mutation Spore Lord. Spore Lord has a chance of granting us a variety of buffs with each explosive attack. 10% chance to give us 1% resistance to all explosive damage, 5% chance for a 1% increase to movement speed, 5% chance to give a passive regen of 1 half health every 3 seconds, and our favorite, a 5% chance to give a 1% increase to explosive damage. That might not sound very great, but each of those can stack 50 times. And while that percentage chance is relatively low, thanks to our blindingly fast attack speed, we're going to be racking up buffs in record time. For mutations, you need mastery rank of all of these. 
First up is Lil Fist. Lil Fist gives us a 2% damage boost with every punch, stacking up to a total of 100 times. Just be careful because like Samurai, these stacks are reset when you receive any damage. At the mastery level, it also guarantees a second punch for every punch that lands. Stacking that with Fury on top of our insane machine gun punches, you can rack up to max in record time. Next is Truffle Tussle. This gives each of our punches a 10% chance to cause a fungal explosion dealing 75 damage in a wide AoE. We combine that with Spore Lord, which we discussed earlier, for a wide variety of buffs stacking up to 50 times each. Sharpshooter for a hefty 20% critical hit chance, and Trapper Peeper to boost our critical hit damage up another 60%. We bump this up even higher with Perfect Toast, Boss Sauce, and Liquid Rage. Combined at full stacks, this brings our critical hit chance up to 30%, and our critical hit damage is a staggering plus 260% damage, stunlocking our enemies and taking our wimpy punches to a respectable level. Now for the cornerstone of this build are trinkets. Yes, plural, trinkets. This part is the hardest grind. For our first trinket, we need both Fury and Mad Scientist. Fury gives all our unarmed attacks a 25% chance to launch a second punch. What makes the second punch so epic is that they can inherit weapon mutations or weapon-specific trinket modifiers. That means despite us only wielding our fists, we can proc Mad Scientist. Scientist. I actually got the idea from Sadinki. Major kudos, mate. If you're not familiar with him, he's made some amazing grounded content. Check him out. But we're gonna take this to another level because the pinch whacker is totally unnecessary. Now I covered Mad Scientist in another build, showing off just how powerful this modifier is. This will give all our second punch attacks a 10% chance to gift us with any of the following buffs, stacking up to 12 times total until combat ends. 10% increase to attack damage, 10% decrease to exhaustion time, 1% increase to critical hit chance, and our absolute favorite, a 10% increase to attack speed. That's the one we want. For our second trinket, we need Fury, Samurai, and if at all possible, also plus unarmed damage. Now if you can't get that god roll, it's okay. Just get Fury and Samurai. Then on a third trinket, get Fury and plus unarmed damage. It's slightly less optimal, but works perfectly fine. We covered Samurai in my Shinobi Assassin build. This modifier is extremely strong. Attacks with a katana type weapon increase our attack speed by 10% for a maximum of 5 stacks, but it resets if you take damage. Thanks to Fury, our fists will proc Samurai as well. Here's how this works in a fight. Hot bar these trinkets in this order. Mad Scientist plus Fury, then Samurai plus Fury, and if you couldn't get unarmed damage on that same trinket as Samurai, then the third one is Fury plus Unarmed Damage. At the start of the fight, have the Mad Scientist one equipped and just start swinging. You'll steadily notice your attack speed going up. After around 15 seconds of punching, it's very likely you've reached your max of 12 stacks. If you've got the reflexes, you can very quickly bring up your inventory, glance at the bottom right to see if you've got your 12 stacks. Once you have them, switch over to your second trinket with Samurai. Continue punching away, you'll notice your attacks will get exponentially faster. Fully stacked, you will literally become a machine gun with fists for bullets, putting even the greatest Wing Chun master to shame. At this stage, you're likely approaching the critical threshold needed to delete bosses. Keep punching, making sure to block or parry all incoming damage, and in a few seconds, the boss will be dead. This part is very important. You must not take any damage, or your little fists and samurai stacks will be reset. Once the enemy hits you with a DOT like poison, venom, or bleed, you're fighting an uphill battle hoping for a long enough window between their dot attacks and the time needed to build your stacks up all the way. Anyone who is familiar with the punching build after Obsidian nerfed it should be comfortable with this. The punching build is not for your average player, but if you've made it this far in New Game Plus, you're not the average player. Alright, you've seen the Moldy Monk in action, but now it's time we ask the big questions. How does this build actually hold up in New Game Plus? To help put things in perspective and help you compare this build against my other New Game Plus builds, I've come up with 5 rating metrics. First, we have setup difficulty. 
indicating the difficulty and time required to put this build together. Much like the standard Fist build was in our main playthrough, this build is relatively difficult to set up. I'm gonna have to give it 9 out of 10 cabbages. The hardest part by far is getting the required trinket modifiers. Fury, Mad Scientist, and Samurai are uncommon trinket modifiers and can only be found on science cones or Globasa necklaces. While it's not a god roll to get two of these on one trinket, it's still going to be time consuming for most of you. This is made even more challenging because now I need you to get at least two trinkets with a specific combination of these. On top of that, we need to get plus unarmed damage in there somewhere. If you're really, really lucky, you might get a god roll with plus unarmed damage on one of these two trinkets, but more than likely you're going to need to farm a third trinket with fury and plus unarmed damage. Additionally, there's a whole slew of mutations you need to grind out. For a little fist, you need to kill a total of 200 hostile enemies using just your fists. I'd recommend using mites and spider links. Spore Lord requires you to have beaten the infected brood mother. You'll need a lot of her parts to make the full armor set as well. Trapper Peeper requires you to have unlocked 60 gold cards. Sharpshooter, you need to get 200 bow or crossbow kills. It's just a very time consuming build to grind out. Next, we have power, indicating the strength of this build and how quickly you can take out the enemy. Without a doubt, this build is 10 out of 10 cabbages. Fully stacked and decked out, your machine gun punches will plow through the enemy's health bar at a staggering rate, not to mention all the ridiculous explosions, crits, and stun locks. I mean, just look at that health bar. The boss doesn't even know what happened to it yet. Next is ease of use, indicating the difficulty or skill level required to use this build effectively. It's been well over a year now since the unarmed build was nerfed. Before, it didn't matter if you took damage, you kept your stacks of increasing damage until the fight ended. Ever since then, the build only works if you take no damage during the fight, and that's still true here. For that reason alone, it makes this build harder to use. I have to give this one 3 out of 10 cabbages. The higher, the easier, meaning this one's pretty tough. For the uninitiated, avoiding all damage may seem like a daunting task. But folks, if you're here in the mid or higher New Game Plus iterations, you've got the skills to make this build work. This is your time to shine, really hone those perfect blocks. And let's not forget, you have the shield to make things a little easier. The shield can take a lot of punishment should you mess up the timing of some of those parries. Another key tip to this build, if you take damage while building your stacks, keep a cool head. It's not over yet. The Mad Scientist buff stays even when you take damage, so switch back to your Samurai plus Fury Trinket to build up those 5 stacks of attack speed. With the full stacks, keep focus, being sure to parry block all the attacks while you build up your little fist stacks. At around 50 stacks, you'll notice your damage starts to skyrocket. That's your chance to put the boss down on your next major opening. With good practice and smart aggression, you'll be taking down most of the bosses in a minute flat. My fourth metric is flexibility. This metric asks the big question of how flexible this build is in a wide variety of situations. Can it be used against all the bosses, Java-matic, 1v1, 1v-many, and the Black Widow? This build heavily fluctuates in effectiveness based on the situation and fight you're in. For that reason, I'll give this one 5 out of 10 cabbages. Bosses? The Broodmother's no problem. It's incredibly easy to build up your stacks and punch her into next week. The Mantis is really tough. It's very difficult to pull this build off here in the higher new game pluses. The primary issue is the Mantis applies status effects even when you perfect block some of her attacks. She has the screen that inflicts bleed, and that's totally unblockable. She has this charged ground slam, where even if you perfect block, you'll have poison or venom applied if she has that modifier, even through the shield. You're just bone. At the lower New Game Plus levels, it's possible to pull this off though. The key is to defeat her before she does her first scream. After that first scream, you're fighting an uphill battle for the rest of the fight, praying for an opening between mini mantises and status effects. The Wasp Queen isn't quite as tricky as you might think. Your biggest threat here are her adds and the poison venom effects they all can apply. When she's near the ground, get in as many punches as possible. If she summons, be extremely careful to 
would sidestep or block their charged stinger attacks. Keep the queen between you and the summons as much as possible. If the summons are giving you trouble, like they're resetting your stacks, consider replacing the sharpshooter mutation with assassin to get a nice bleed effect on them, taking them out quickly so you can focus on the boss. The infected broodmother is surprisingly straightforward. You'd think your explosions would heal her, but interestingly, that does not appear to be the case once we apply our 20% explosive debuff. Perfect blocker attacks, position away from falling bomb spores, and be very aggressive in your openings. You can get unlucky in phase 3 though, if she shoots her fungal grenade at you. It's very difficult to avoid, but I found jumping towards her diagonally can sometimes save you from this cheap shot. The key I found to beating phase 3 is to make sure you're fully stacked on buffs as you finish her second phase. Be extremely aggressive, taking advantage of her openings right away to take her down before she has the chance to hit you with one of those cheap shots. Outside of the bosses, this build is less useful as it takes a bit of time to build those stacks up. If it's 1v1, I often skip using the Mad Scientist plus Fury trinket and jump straight to the Samurai plus Fury plus unarmed damage. For 1v many, stick to Mad Scientist plus the Fury trinket as it's very difficult to avoid all damage. Your time to kill won't be as fast here as some of my other builds, but it's entirely usable. The Javamatic is particularly challenging for this build. There's far too many attacks incoming to realistically avoid all of it. It's possible though. Like I suggested for 1v many, use the Mad Scientist plus Fury Trinket for most of the fight. You can always switch to the other ones if things are going well. My last metric is fun. It's really important to me that these builds aren't just strong, but are also enjoyable and fun to use. That's what gaming's really about, having fun. This build is definitely a min-maxer's paradise. I'm gonna give it 8 out of 10 cabbages. The only thing holding it back from being a 10 out of 10 is the skill level required to pull it off in all situations. If you thought it was impossible to ever see the ridiculous damage you could do with little fists of the past, well, you're in for a hell of a treat. This build is insanely fun and insanely powerful in the hands of the hardcore gamer. With fists infused with explosive power and punches as fast as machine gun Shots, you're gonna blast the enemy back into the hole they crawled out of. So what'd you think guys? That was a pretty epic build, right? Keep in mind my builds always have room for customization, so feel free to play around with it, mixing and matching until you're satisfied. What are some builds you guys play with? Have something awesome you'd like to share? Drop the build in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for sticking around. See you all next time.